hey, been meaning hey. to talk to you. Hey, listen, I'm serious. Hey, take a seat. This is when I tell you to stop smoking pot. That's that. Hey, hey, sit on the edge of your bed, son, or smoke more, whichever kind of dad I am. <laughs> it depends on what <laughs> you always forget the other option. And what I'm saying to my kid is, hey, it's episode 40 of Alex and Jim analyze belly joel lyrics we did this 40 times well hey, we I, did 39 times and we're doing it by the way i didn't do that on purpose but when you're 40 is when you look in the mirror and go hey come on hey you got to get it together come on really so you're still bad with money there's programs you can do don't do the one Man. that costs a lot of money and doesn't work just <laughs> yes don't do that one and don't you've got to get rid of the milk crate furniture yeah yeah you you like i'm tired of being alone well make yourself somebody that a Be person like being with yeah it's not their fault it's you can't be hey if you can't be okay with yourself how can somebody else be okay with you right you should know that by now you're 40 yeah yeah and by the way at this point, there is no second wind. No. So. This is the wind you get. Work with your current wind. Yes, you're only human, but also that excuse only works for a while. Yeah. You're human, um, but some humans are good at stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll try that. Yeah. You're a human. You'll still be human. Yeah. Being human doesn't mean being expectation free. Yeah. You. Um, and also separate but similar thought. Freedom doesn't mean you get to do whatever you want all the time. Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Speaking of that. Hello. OK, one moment, please. Did we get food? I'll be right down. We got food. Right. Sue. Would you mind getting the food? He doesn't know how to work the thing. I'm so sorry. Now, if uh, you, this, this is your first episode tuning into our show. This is a segment we always do where Jim has to guess what they ordered tonight. Yeah. They're, it's probably our most popular segment. I'd say of our three segments, yeah. it's the most popular one. Next to Jim models hats, which I'm not, I didn't bring hats this week. But but again, if it's your first episode, every episode I usually model a different hat. Right. And I didn't get one this week, and I'm embarrassed. But I want to say Chinese food. Uh, no, incorrect. Then I'm going to say pizza. No. Nope. No. No. Closer though. Oh, uh, spaghetti. Got some uh, bolognese coming my ways. Bolognese. That's the spaghetti. Absolutely. Now, do you get uh, the vegetarian bolognese or you get the meat? Oh, I get the meat. Even though I'm well past 40 and yeah. shouldn't, probably shouldn't get that much meat. Now, uh, me. I deal with myself. Yeah. Me past 40. I live that long. <laughs> yeah. I have to get the meat. I, vegetarian bolognese is actually very bad for me. I have to get the meat if I'm going to do it, yeah. which means I probably just shouldn't eat it at all. But. <laughs> I have to have a solid protein or my sugar goes haywire. Oh, yeah. You got that problem. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. By the way, check out this shirt. Gee. Yeah. Now. What is that indicative of? Now, I'm going to let you guess what this is for. And I'll give you a hint. It's a costume from a sketch I wrote. Wow. So this character wore a G, and I will be incredibly impressed if you can just kind of guess what the character was. God. And we won't do this very long because you have a poor shot at this because you have no information. Yeah, just, no information. Take a wild guess. I'm going to say uh, groceries has to do with groceries. No, and that's mean. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, it is from a character, Super Garrison Keeler. Wow. Yeah, it was uh, Garrison. What is power? 
Well, Garrison Keillor could lull you to sleep and then he would rob right. you. He was a that villain. Cracked. And um, he was his, the, um, the superhero was, who took him down was Super Maya Angelou. Wow. Who would inspire you into more or less kind of a catatonic state because she would inspire you so much. Right. And, uh, and nobody ever saw Maya Angelou and Super Maya Angelou together. So nobody knew that Maya Angelou was actually Super Maya Angelou. I mean, it's the perfect cover. <laughs> wow. Isn't that a cute, uh, cute sketch? It's a cute sketch. I can't yeah. believe I didn't guess it. Yeah. How could you not guess from this amazing costume? It's really, it really is like the costume he would design, I think. Let's keep it dull. Yeah. So I played that part in our little live show and I had a cape and I wrote the sketch. So, you know, which meant I got to cast it as well. So am I going to be super, super. <laughs> yeah. And I was performed. Where did you do this sketch? Uh, a number of live venues in Los Angeles. You did it more than once. Mm -hmm. It ended up in our best of. This is a funny sketch. And then we filmed a version of it when we did our, you know, our little sketch group got on TV for a little while. Did you know no that? Kid. Yeah. On Fuel TV. <laughs> oh, Fuel. Yeah, sure. If you don't know Fuel, Fuel is like channel 870 or something yeah and and you don't listen to it with the volume on it's a tv station that's exclusively in sports bars in the background when there's not a game going on so they show surfing right i remember it yeah and i was in a bar once when our show came on and i was like oh our show's on there's no volume <laughs> I, I, I bet we don't get picked up <laughs> my was wow. right. god damn great the best part is we were poorly paid and they edited it badly oh great yeah that's what you want yeah those two things that's so when you wear the shirt around town do you ever get recognized um for groceries for groceries yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that tracks it's mean but it tracks it's mean but they're not wrong they don't mean to be mean. So my favorite part of this dumb sketch, we never uh -huh. found out for the show. That was something we did separate. My favorite part is I'm doing a Garrison Keillor impression. And my friend uh, Eric was doing as uh, Maya Angelou. And he did a pretty good Maya Angelou if Maya Angelou had a little mustache. She never did. He just wasn't going to shave his. Sure. Why and, come in? Yeah. And apparently nobody in the group had ever seen Garrison Keillor. <laughs> and so everybody's like, oh, okay. And it wasn't until months later, my friend Tom goes, you weren't doing, a, I don't know what you were doing, but that's not a Garrison Keillor impression. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I probably should have watched it again because I hadn't seen him in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the editing that killed you, but also research. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Too, too much research. Department. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. So what, a, what a time to be alive. Exactly. If indeed that's what we are. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Um, uh, I was talking to our, our friend Graham Elwood today, and we were I was talking about my two um, vasal vagus syncopes and how my wife thought I had died. Sure. And, uh, he said, well, I'm glad you didn't die. And I go, I am. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't. <laughs> and he, go, and I, he goes, well, let me know. And I go, how would I know? Good old man conversation. <laughs> so last week, you picked Stiletto. Stiletto, which I picked because of what we did last week was She's Always a Woman. Yes. When, in which he had a lot of complaints about a woman, but also liked her a lot. Yep. And... Um, it reminded me of the song Stiletto, in which he has, I think, even more intense complaints. And you have, and they have a similar complaint regarding knife play. Yeah, there's a lot of 
I mean, the song is named after a type of knife. Yes. Or blade. Or shoe. Or shoe. Yeah. I think the shoe is named after the blade. Yeah. That would be really weird if a dude was like, oh, this would be a great name for a knife. That shoe you're wearing. <laughs> I mean, if you've seen a pair of stilettos, you can be like, oh, that could be inspired to make a knife. Yeah. And then another guy's got kind of a dull knife and he goes, we call these loafers. Like, look, you're going too far. Just stick with the stiletto. Hey, there's no, I got a knife with no laces. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. It'll be, uh, look, man, I'll, I'll glue a penny to it for fashion <laughs> yeah yeah it always looks good by and the way i, I have slip uh, on, fancy ivy league school i have slip on shoes now by the way i'm an old man i have slip on shoes well it depends on what kind are they leather no then you're not that old okay are they, are they uggs no okay then you're not that young yeah they are nikes but i don't know what that means are they uh, slides like nike slides I, maybe I don't know, which is another way I'm old. I have no idea what they're called. But there's no thong. No, there's not a thing that your toes go like this. Mm -mm. Yeah, those are slides then. Okay. So you're like a drug dealer. Oh, I, like I always that. think of those as like uh, fat drug dealer shoes. Oh yeah, that might just be because of the people I used to know. <laughs> they're mostly fat drug dealers who wore slides and like basketball shorts. It'd be funny if upon inspection, we realized that you associate every outfit with, outfit with drug dealers because <laughs> you've just been going to a shit ton of dealers. <laughs> yeah, you know, like if I see a guy wearing a, like a baseball hat, that's a drug dealer. That's a drug hat. You, you see some guy eating a sandwich? Eh, drug dealer. Oh, yeah. All the people I've I, seen. I saw eat. a guy in a car. <laughs> drug dealer. No, that's a drug dealer. They love cars. <laughs> If you see a guy who's not a guy, but he's a lady, that's a drug dealer. Oh, yeah. Corrective uh, lenses, drug dealer. <laughs> Anti-drug activist, drug dealer. Drug de yeah, probably a good cover. Mm -hmm. I've known people like that. Oh, sure. Cops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Um, oh. A friend of mine used to buy drugs at the McDonald's drive through in Queens. He just, I don't know how you find these things out, but he's like, oh, if you go to this drive through and you ask for like a quarter pounder, but with extra cheese, they'll sell you a bag of heroin. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. It must be so weird to try that the first time. Like somebody tells you, like you're at a bar, yeah. you're like, hey, the McDonald's over on Henderson Street, just tell them you want a quarter pounder with extra cheese yeah. and you'll get drugs. It must be so weird to go through the drive through the first time and try it. Yeah, not to be too Jim Gaffigan, but if you get heroin at a McDonald's, you've gotten the healthiest thing they sell. You just have. Very Gaffigan, did you see him on our show, by the way? No, I haven't yet. Fantastic. Yeah, yes, he is. Every time, of course. Always the best. Yeah, and, and never, never not a great Catholic story, never not a great food story something yep and he's about kids yeah he's transitioning into an interesting his version of getting a little personal because it's still very gentle and easy to digest yeah i feel like it's gotten sharper like uh, a little more acidic yep which is bound to happen and is appropriate and it's like yeah you should uh, not do the same act forever until you die. You yeah. should have <laughs> some moves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let me. So first thought about stiletto. Um, I like the way it begins a lot. It begins with a little saxophone. Right. And I also like when an, an accomplished piano player. I've been lucky enough to see a lot of different, like, real good piano players live because my wife's a singer. Oh, yeah. And I like it when there's a thing at the beginning of the song that seems like something ridiculously easy to play because it just goes T -t 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 and I like that kind of that thing a piano player does. Yeah. And it's done really well in this song. Yes. And he does nothing the, to add. I'm just agreeing a lot. Yeah. And then he so does. Right. 
Yeah. And he does the move that can, that is, it's a cliche move, but it's a good move in this song where you start out moody with the saxophone and then it speeds up. Yeah. And it's uh, threatening. Yeah. Which is a wildly appropriate considering yeah. how many crimes are committed in the course yeah. of the song. And it's cool too, because it gives you that impression, given that you want it's a moody, almost noir kind of feeling to the thing. It gives you the to me, it was like it's the feeling of feeling okay until you went around the corner and saw what was around the corner. Yeah. In like a scary black and white movie. Yeah. That's the feeling you want. Yeah. So I liked that. Now, here, just as a as an open ended question, what are you? What's your general enjoyment of this song? I enjoy it musically more than <laughs> lyrically, honestly. Um, but I like it's a, like I like this album because he is messing around with jazz yeah. vibes, um, and it's just it. They're all very textured songs um very moody like very specific moods yeah to the songs and i like it that way yeah i like imagining i'm in a little jazz club i don't um, think he's trying to sound like anybody by the way i don't think no so. i don't think so i think this is very this feels personal <laughs> like most of his stabbing songs <laughs> yeah yeah the sub -genre. Oh, this, this might have uh, been this might have been like written a week after something happened yeah like a week after he got stabbed <laughs> yeah <laughs> he had to wait until he had enough strength to play it <laughs> yeah some artists go through a blue period he's like this is my uh gotten stabbed period <laughs> there was a well, i'm getting stabbed a lot in like 77 78 <laughs> <laughs> strangely productive wrote so many songs so many songs so inspired all the time yeah a couple songs i couldn't record because the lyrics were obscured by blood. <laughs> uh, I bet those were good songs. Good songs. Um, I, just couldn't, I couldn't remember them. <laughs> <laughs> the blood loss. Uh, like, what was her name again? Oh, fuck. Never mind. I'm going to take a nap. Uh, you mentioned you like this album. It's 52nd Street, isn't it? Yes, I should say that. Yeah. But you did, so I won't. 1978. Um, Yes. Um, lots of big hits. This is not one of them. Mm -mm. What do you think held it back from being a big hit? Too stabby? <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like there was plenty of uh, violent rock and roll that was a hit. Yeah. Was Maybe it too jazzy? Yeah. It was probably too jazzy. It was the same thing that holds back some of his music is the same reason we're still talking about him and not bread. Right. Is that there was more to it. And initially, most people don't want more to it in their pop music. Sure. Yeah, you want it to sound like all the other pop music that's happening yeah. at that particular time. Yep. And I think, I feel like, I don't know how purposeful it was, but I feel like he, his albums are always pretty well divided into like, here's your hit. Here's a radio hit or two, and the rest of these are for me. For sure. Uh, and there's, it's like, there's a distance between those two. Because the hits on that, on 52nd Street, are what? Like Allentown? Yeah. And Pressure. Wait, Allentown's on that? Isn't it? No, that can't. Maybe. It may be. 78 feels too early for Allentown. Oh, yeah, no, that's too early. What's on 52nd Street? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I should be better at this. Yeah. Let's look at this because, yeah, that's too early, I think. You know what's very funny is I've listened to so little Billy Joel since we started doing this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Before yeah. this, all the time. Now, this is absurd that we didn't remember this or big shots. <laughs> Of course, which is a little jazzy, but yeah. is a straight up pop hit. My Life, which was episode one. Yeah. Not, what could be poppier? Zanzibar, which we've talked about. Jazz. Uh, Rosalinda's Eyes. 
That's for his mom and nobody else. Yep. Honesty. <laughs> Great night song. Great up. Radio hit. I don't think we've talked about that yet, have we? You could I tell me. We have. I could tell you if I'd remembered. Yeah. You could tell me, get your honesty. That's pretty good. Uh, no, <laughs> joke. Uh, until the night. Oh, I love it. And uh, hard to believe, but 52nd Street was also on this. <laughs> Half a oh. mile away, which I don't even remember. Oh, buddy. Do yourself a favor. Okay. We love half a mile away. Yeah, what's going wrong with me? What's right? And in, in reference to this, you don't have to get into the other stuff that's wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> crumple, crumple, toss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what, since you picked it, why don't you start us out? All right, that's a fair punishment. <laughs> uh, immediately, she cuts you once. <laughs> She cuts you twice, but still you believe. The wound is so fresh you can taste the blood, Ooh. but you don't have strength to leave. From being stabbed, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, it's very real-world experience <laughs> that he's bringing to it. You've been bought. You've been sold. You've been locked outside the door. I'll stop there. So... Well, right to it. Yeah. Um, it's he's distancing himself nicely. This is like she cuts you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not in this. He's saying, like, this is not a thing that happened. This is who she is. Yeah. She is a person who cuts you, <laughs> and you are a person who will still believe. I don't know if he's talking down to some guy who's not getting it about this girl. Yeah. Or if he's just saying, like, it's the way of the world. She uh, treats you like shit and you love it. Yeah. One of the first observations I had thinking about the song when you first picked it was I like that um, we're a little closer to the action um, when she cuts you and laughs while you're bleeding because that's clearly a girl he's seeing. Right. And initially in this song, it seems like he's talking about somebody somebody else is seeing. But it also feels like it could be the same lady, and he's finally come to his senses. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Was the other one written first? Yes. It was, right? It was on The Stranger. So the yeah. album before this. So I wonder if it's about the same lady. With it's entirely possible. I mean, all the signs are there. <laughs> yeah. And it wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't know it's about the same lady because it's that kind of boneheaded cluelessness. Oh, yeah. It's fun to imagine. I do like to imagine it's literal stabbing. It's so, <laughs> much, it's so much worse that it's not. Because, you know, you could sur you survived getting stabbed. Okay, great. You got a cool scar and a cool story. Right. You take this kind of abuse. You're just damaged yeah that's not as fun yeah but it's i mean obviously he's very clearly being metaphorical so yeah that's what it is um you're uh you've been duped yeah you've been bought you've been sold you've been locked outside the door now here by the way something we've talked about with our friend billy joel you get locked outside the door and that's clearly in his in, in in his mind, him getting locked outside the door is her fault. <laughs> and anytime I've been locked out of my house by my significant other, which happened early in our relationship, I'm going to say it was my fault. Yeah, that's usually how it works out. It's the old thing of like uh, saying uh, that your ex was crazy. Right. Well, how come? Yeah. I mean, maybe sometimes uh, some people are crazy. Yeah. That's absolutely true. But most of the time or a fair amount of the time when a dude says that, it's like, I treated her like shit. And then she yeah. acted crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah, they'll do that. I cheated and she made a whole thing about it. <laughs> then she always wanted to know what I was up to. 
It's yeah. like, I'm going for a walk at midnight. What? To see that girl? Why are you so suspicious? And yes. <laughs> yes. I'm going to tell her you act like this. This is why I'm going to see her. Okay, that doesn't make sense. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, that would never stand in a court of law, sir. <laughs> uh, still you, I think. I like that he sort of, he seems to like respect this <laughs> yeah. lady and the way she is. Uh, I'll keep going. Uh, let's see. But you, you've been locked outside the door, but you stand there pleading <laughs> with your insides bleeding because you deep down want some more. Ooh. Yeah. That is a good admission. This is a good admission. And I think also not so deep down. <laughs> <laughs> I think you you like this on the surface. Yes, it's the first layer of skin. It's that deep. Then she says she wants forgiveness. It's such a clever masquerade. She's so good with her stiletto, you don't even see the blade. He's like, much respect to her game. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. He's not very generous to the dude in this scenario which may very well be him yeah like you are a putz and all these things happen to you but you gotta respect she's good with the blade <laughs> what can you i know, say you know what that's cool and also that then in that regard feels fairly unique for a billy joel song in that yeah sense. and because you're absolutely right he's their only way to look at this is that the guy's a sucker right or he's either a sucker or he's a masochist and he's just he likes being abused so then quit bitching about it it seems to be very little about him yeah and it's mostly about how great she is at this she can work you mm -hmm. treat you like shit and make and you come back for more got to give it up for her yeah not seeing, yeah, it's not much uh, on him. He's telling us about this lady. And I like that, by the way. And I will have to say, just looking at the first set of lyrics as you read them, they're really good lyrics, I think. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's marries the music really nicely. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is exactly, when you hear the music, you're like, oh, that, and then the lyrics kick in. You're like, oh, this is what I want this to be about. Yeah. But, and by the way, there's no weird phrases just to cram into the meter either <laughs> yeah yeah there's, there's not, good flow yeah it's reminding me of uh man eater which is a clunkier song about the same sort of lady yeah yeah that, I think just man eater is such a weird word <laughs> yeah. to call someone <laughs> this is more just descriptive yeah he i don't call I, her don't, anything now, that's a great example, by the way, of something we just mentioned. Maneater was a big hit. Yes. I don't think it's a good song. I think it's a killer bass line. Yeah. And that's what uh, makes it a pop hit. Yes. But it's not something, like if you hear it, it's fine. It's a good, it, there's nothing wrong with it, but it ain't worth many revisits. No. And you don't, it, it will find you, by the way. <laughs> you don't yeah. have to listen to it. Yeah. It shows up places where you don't yeah. expect it. It'll be nine soundtracks and then. Sure. You know, Hold music. In a grocery store. Oh. Uh, yeah. It'll, you'll hear lots of dumb. <laughs> but Stiletto, on the other hand, when you hear it, unless you're us and a few people, it's the first time you heard that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very likely true. And there's more going on to I'll our tell you what, point. Walking around this city where I live, you will hear Billy Joel a lot. And uh, never this song. Never this song. Yeah. You'll hear Piano Man a lot. Still rock and roll to me. All the pop radio hits, but never the, the <laughs> terrifying B-sides. <laughs> <laughs> and New York, you're missing out. You need to make more of an effort. Yeah, maybe if you go deeper into the burrows. <laughs> I like this pizza place. How's the pizza? Eh, it's not, it's okay. But sometimes they play stiletto. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, she cuts you hard. She cuts you deep. And I just want to draw attention to how we're getting more into it because it was she cuts you once, she cuts you twice. She cuts you hard, she cuts you deep. That's a good revisit of what we're talking about, but adding more to it. Yes, agree. She's got so much skill. She's so fascinating that you're still there waiting. Now this dude knows he's about to get cut. <laughs> still waiting. He's like, well, last time she hurt me, but it ooh, looks like this time. Ooh, I, I think that's a bigger knife. That's great. And again, we've all been there. Indeed. Like, well, we know, I know she's going to kill me, but so interesting. <laughs> and maybe there's a little bit of sex before it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, sex. <laughs> sex. Oh, well, just, just cut it. Again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's probably for the better. I've lost too much blood anyway. I do. It's weird how much he, like, respects this uh the stabbing it, it you know it's like she cuts you hard she cuts you deep she's an asshole no nope she's got so much skill she's got so much skill so fascinating when you're still there waiting when she comes back for the kill wow so then <laughs> Looking at it metaphorically or literally, nothing good about this because damage has been done and and she's coming back. Yeah, more damage coming up. She ain't done with you, son. <laughs> that was the warm-up. Yeah, man. You've been slashed in the face. You've been left there to bleed. You want to run away. Thank God. And you think you want to run away, but you can't because you're bleeding too much. No, but you know you're going to stay. So it isn't even that. Yeah. You are choosing, again, <laughs> you and I both, for sure, Yeah. made the choice. You're like, all right, in for a penny, in for a pound, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This is yeah. actually... I got to say, this is actually a fun one to analyze because it's brutal. It's really brutal. It's uh, unrelenting. There's a lot of cutting. Yep. You want to run away. Knives and bleeding. <laughs> and really not much else. Yep. But you know you're going to stay because she gives you what you need. That's you. Well, tell you what you need. Does she, though? You need Al Anon or you need uh, adult survivors of something group. Yeah, you need. You can't possibly need uh, bloodletting. <laughs> Some old timey doctors would disagree, but still. <laughs> right, right. I don't think that's what he's going for. Oh, yeah. what is it? She, I don't think she gives you what you need. However, maybe she does because then she says she needs affection, and that's what you've been hanging out with, holding, out, hoping for. Right. While she searches for the vein. Great. So even I mean, if you uh, get lucky and get lucky, she's got a plan. Ooh, and then if we do make love, I can hurt him again a different way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she can. A great couplet. Yeah. Oh, God, that's fantastic. Because that's like, yeah, we made love, and then she said I wasn't as good as this guy I didn't know about. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. Oh, She's so good with her stiletto, you don't really mind the pain. Let me draw attention, by the way, to the verse you read before. You don't even see the blade. Yeah. Now, you know about the blade. And you, <laughs> you know about the blade. You just don't care. You just don't care. Wow. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. See. And before you get into. That's the under your, 40 thinking. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and before you get into your lyrics, I'm just going to say, again, economy of lyrics in this one, which I really like when he does that. Yes. Always appreciated. 
there's not a lot of repeated phrases. There's and there's not even really. There's one overarching theme, yeah. but it's not restated the same way over and over to annoyance. Mm -hmm. It actually gets deeper and deeper. Yeah, more specific. Crueler and crueler. And no and, repeated repeated verses. Yeah. Word now what? Word. What do you think? Because we often have slightly different views of this. There is a slight change in the music. Uh, it's not quite the bridgey thing. It's not quite. It's really only for like two lines. Yeah. It's almost like a breather and back in. Agreed. Really. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. Yeah. I think it, it also calls attention to the lyrics in that specific space. Yeah. And those are like all really good couplets. Yeah. So it slows down just a, a hair. Yeah. In that part. And I agree. I think it really does make a point of, you know, there, there are songs you don't listen to lyrics at all. And I'm not that guy. I like lyrics in all songs, even songs I should just listen to. Right. I still want to know what she's saying. It's always interesting to know. Yeah. yeah. Somebody wrote them down. Yeah. What were they going for? To me, they're almost the most interesting part of a song, but it's because I'm not great with music. So there you go. <laughs> um, I can write words. Like, yeah. I like that turn, uh, the little slowdown. Yeah. Now, even looking at the lyrics, damn, they're brutal. <laughs> they're great. Relentless. And I think you need those little short breathers. Yeah. Otherwise, it's, just, it's really just stabbing. <laughs> It's like uh, when the killer takes uh, a moment to catch his breath. Yeah. Or her breath in this case. Indeed. because We're uh, finishing you off. Because women can do it too. Women can do it too. Look, it's the 90s. Right? How well, long was I asleep? 70s, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. yeah, yeah. She's a modern woman. <laughs> She's a modern woman. She stabs people. <laughs> uh, for uh 88 cents on the dollar <laughs> that's not fair she, it's she's not fair it's not nice she's as murderer as any man <laughs> yes yeah uh and i will and as an introduction and you'll you'll take us home the next verse i look at it and i'm like and we're still doing different things it's great. Still different things, but still doing the same thing. Yep. Um, just being uh, more and more specific. Yep. She cuts you out. She cuts you down. She carves up your life. But you won't do nothing as she keeps on cutting. Because uh. you know you love the knife. Great. Neat thing, by the way, because now he undresses the metaphor. And now it's just, now we're, we're objectively not talking about knife cuts now. Carves up your life, but yep. you do nothing. You won't do nothing as she keeps, and because now before it was, you didn't mind the pain. Yeah. Now you love the knife. Yeah. You're not even hoping for something else anymore. <laughs> oh no, and now I just like, this. just stab me. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, transference has occurred. Yeah. I just, I don't even want the other thing now, just the knife. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and then she does the nice thing and you're like, save it. And now you're, she's like, oh, all right. I know, just the stabbing, please. You don't have to pretend to hold my hand. <laughs> just treat me like shit. Yeah. You love the knife. You've been bought. You've been sold. You've been locked outside the door. Oh, that is a repeat. Yeah, you're right. But you stand there pleading. <laughs> I never like the apostrophe. Yeah. I mean, obviously, when he sings it, it's pleading. But like, write the G when you're writing the lyrics. Yeah. You stand there pleading with your insides bleeding as you deep down want some more. Oh, this is all repeated. Oh, I guess it is. <laughs> at the back end it's the one time 
And I think it works as a closer. That's interesting because you're right. Up until now. All fresh until you know you love the knife. I think that's really the end of the song. Yeah. It's really the end of the evolution of the metaphor. It's like, we've left behind this idea that you're hoping for a nice girl to emerge from this nightmare. Yeah. And now you just love the knife. At the end, and yeah. repeat some lyrics on the way out. And Did you is, know whether it has a hard ending or if it uh, fades? I have an opinion about that. So here's <laughs> what's interesting to me about it. Mm -hmm. is it has a little bit of a fade out. Oh, yeah. The gunk, 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 gunk. But it feels like an artistic choice rather than we did this because we didn't know what to do because the lyrics don't fade out. He's not going stiletto, stiletto. <laughs> He's not doing that. <laughs> right. Although you agree he should have, though, right? No. Um, <laughs> well, You've made me, you've given me a lot to think about. <laughs> Rather, it is the and it feels apropos to a, well, now that we've thought about the lyrics, it feels appropriate to the lyrics because this isn't ending. It just continues. No. Yeah, this is like dot, dot, dot. Yeah. And it she ends will, with. She'll be stabbing you forever, sir. <laughs> yes. And it ends with. I don't think. If I'm remembering correctly, I don't think the saxophone repeats. I don't think so. I and that's a good choice. Like, that would have been terrible. Um, the other thing I noticed in music, uh, in the fade in and out, is that low part of the piano, the gunk, 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 oh, gunk, yeah, is a heartbeat. It sounds like a heartbeat to me. It's got to be. It's got to be. I mean. There's there's too much uh, circulatory system involved in the rest of the song. And there's too much, there's a lot of lovely intention in this song. There's no, you know, there's some songs where you're like, I wonder if he did this thing on purpose. And the answer is no, he was trying to finish it. <laughs> right. And, and, and in art, that's true regardless, not just for Billy Joel. But in this one, it feels to me like every choice, there's intention behind it to complete the thought. Yeah, it's certainly yeah. better to think about that way. Yeah, it bookends the song very nicely. And you could, uh, I remember, like we talked about once, when he, he was talking about getting ready and it might've been when he was going to Moscow to do the show. Uh -huh. Talking to him, In some interview, he was talking about the rehearsal process and how sometimes you have to write endings for songs because they didn't have one on the album. Right. And his joke at the time was because you can't end every song going ding, 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 ding. <laughs> That'd be great, though. Yeah, which is a nice self-aware joke. But this <laughs> you could do live with the fade out because you could do that musically and it would. Be yes. Nice. You could just bring it down. Lights dim. Blood, blood effect. <laughs> <laughs> It just slump, slump over the piano. Yeah. <laughs> to reveal a knife. <laughs> Very great. For the Halloween show. That's right. And now you realize it's uh, the whole thing is he's gone full theater. Like, um, don't want that. <laughs> Who did um, Don't Worry, Got a Mr. Roboto? Who was that? Uh, Sticks. Sticks. By the way, did you ever see, did you know that the rest of the band hated, I think it was Dennis DeYoung, right? Yeah hated him for that album oh i'm sure he made them do theater when they were supposed to be doing a rock show they yeah. had dialogue they had to learn oh no yeah they did they had oh. dialogue oh. where there was a guy who wasn't in the band who played kilroy <laughs> i now, forgot about kilroy folks who don't know what i'm talking about uh sticks did this album and it was a concept album and the concept it was i'm not good at this <laughs> but the concept of course it was supposed to be 1984 it was orwellian right and it was this guy kilroy the most generic dumb name who was going to save the world through the resurgence of rock and roll <laughs> And imagine you're a guitar player. 
and what you're good at is guitar playing and you like rock and roll and your dumb lead singer made you learn to words to act and imagine oh. metalheads came to your show and booed <laughs> you booed you and you agreed with them oh awful <laughs> yeah awful and great imagine gotta, billy I, mean, I love the experimentation but yeah it's a spectacular there are a lot of spectacular failures yeah. in that era especially imagine like, billy hey, now we have to try something different you know you really you absolutely don't just imagine, be good at the thing imagine this billy joel he's slumped over the piano there's fake blood it's not even blood by the way it's a red silk because it's that kind oh. of silk. <laughs> And he's forced, sure. he's forced the guy who plays saxophone to put on a Sherlock Holmes cap and go, now we have a mystery. <laughs> and then there's an intermission in the middle of the concert. <laughs> and they play like stiletto really quietly on the speakers. Now the difference between Billy Joel fans and Sticks fans, there's a chance Billy Joel fans would enjoy that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, clearly they like musical theater. Yep. <laughs> uh, oh, Red Silk is so funny. Yeah. Theater blood. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, I will, upon reflection, you like the lyrics more than you thought, right? Yeah. I mean, I like the effect of the lyrics. I yeah. like that it's compact. It clearly, I think he realized, like, well, there's not that many things to say about this. So yeah. We're going to get in and get out, much like you would do with a stiletto. I Now, on a serious note, this is a mistake he could make, and he didn't, which you could imagine the bridge, a mistake where he tries to advise the guy. <laughs> right. Because that's his, that's a move he makes, certainly. Problem he's, in, yeah. he's like, you know, and he's like, I'm trying to warn you. And that's heavy handed <laughs> and dumb. And but yeah. he doesn't do that. I've been through the same thing before. Yeah. I've been stabbed as well. <laughs> I've been stabbed as well by a similar girl. I got the scars to prove. I go, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's <laughs> where the dumb bridge where the music changes too much. Yeah. But he doesn't. Yeah, he's like, hey, this lady's good at stabbing people, huh? All right. <laughs> Bye. Later. <laughs> yeah. So instead, he just paints a little picture. Yeah. And paints it really well. With blood. Yeah. I think I always kind of like the song. I like it a lot more even now, just thinking about it. Yeah. I'm going to listen to it again after this. I think I'm going to do that too and get some pizza. Hey, no. forget about it. What? No. <laughs> I got the bolognese. That's right. You got the bolognese, which is now a cold because of this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put it in the microwave. Oh, I don't have one. <laughs> you don't? No. <sighs> We've made an artistic choice in our house. So is the idea going to be you're leading it cold or will you put it in a pan? Ah, that's a good question. I will probably eat it cold. Yeah. Yeah. Because it'll be warm. It'll be warmish. Yeah. Because it's been in the delivery container. Yeah. Well, Lord, let's do our business so you can eat. Because <laughs> we're about dinner. Um, so let's first, get to so first, and by the way, Sue is very nice for tolerating this. Oh yeah. She's a lovely Believe lady. me. I know our show is wildly successful and there's a reason she tolerates it, but still. Sure. She likes that sweet, sweet money. Yeah, the sweet uh Colonel Mars money. All the sweet green we're pulling down from uh, iHeartRadio. <laughs> so, uh, ah, Captain Jack. Yep. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dave. Hey, Dave. What do you think? Good yeah, returns. Hey, Dave. Good, strong returns on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I really had a moment of panic at first when it was like oh pirate oh fuck and then i was like all oh, right captain jack captain jack uh a sparrow a sparrow song sparrow song from uh 
So the B side of the 45 of House of Blue Light. Let me think. Wait inside the fire. Sparrows. No, that doesn't seem yeah. right. <laughs> Arrow Monkey Mafia. No. <laughs> oh, great. Are you set for some trivia? Um, you're familiar with the NBC show The Office. No longer making new episodes, but it yeah. was a big hit. It do you remember when Michael Scott was making a film called Threat Level Midnight? Yeah, have you watched it in its entirety without the cast interruptions? I have not. It's fun. <laughs> um, do you know that there are two Billy Joel songs in the soundtrack? Oh. As chosen by Michael Scott. And can you name either of them? Um... Still rock and roll to me. No. Ooh. Is Steve Carell a Billy Joel fan? I wonder if this is that. No, but I think the uh, smart Alex who wrote the show thought like, oh, he is a nerd, so he would like Billy Joel. Yeah. Michael Scott then, is, uh, is lame, and therefore he'd be a Billy Joel fan. Yeah. They're not wrong, but... Common, common misconception. Yeah. Quit being dicks, you guys. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, clearly we're very cool. Yeah, we're about as cool as they come. Yeah, this is uh, what cool guys do on Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna do a bunch of cocaine. Um, oh, that's how you know what? I just did a callback to a conversation I had with Graham that you weren't in. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> oh man, I'm old. Oh. Man. Oh, that's hey, here's an old man thing that you've definitely done. You have told your wife a story that she was there for. Absolutely. That's the best. Yeah. Like, oh man, we were at this restaurant and this guy was so drunk. Yeah, I was, I was there with you. <laughs> like, oh yeah. He was drunk though, right? Got so drunk. <laughs> the other thing I've done with my wife, I've told her a story, gotten halfway through, and she said, right. And she makes it clear that I've told her the story before. And I've said, all right, but let me finish the story. I've started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That Sue does that to me. I think I've stopped doing that a little bit, but I still kind of feel incomplete if I'm like, okay, let me yeah. get part. I've come to realize that like, she just has to finish the story. Yeah. It's like, I'm like, okay, great. It's a good, they're all good stories. So I'm like, fine. Great. It's, like this it's, one. it's like watching a movie you've seen You're like oh this is comforting yeah it's the love boat thing like if you get the love boat theme in your head you gotta sing the whole thing and then yeah, it's yeah. Out your head yeah and then you can move on you got plenty of time left in the day um she's always a woman no uh, zanzibar <laughs> <laughs> all right that's, that's probably enough strikes okay um pressure oh okay and then even better than that running on ice <laughs> well good on the writers for doing that yeah that's a good one that's a good one not too on it's the nose good observation that he would think those are cool songs and he's a hockey he's got a hockey skill as a spot yeah right exactly <laughs> Yeah, there's a version of it, by the way, on YouTube. You know what? I know what we're linking to. Oh, great. <laughs> there's a version on the web, and I think it's at the official website anyway, but it's um, entire Threat Level Midnight just edited together so you could just watch it. Fantastic. Not a very good movie. No, I'll bet. Yeah. It's not I, think that was, I feel like that was the point. Yeah. Yeah, Great. but you know what? He learned that he didn't need that. He just needed Holly. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah, Holly was good for him. You know, like that uh, other lady. What was her name? Oh, Jan. Oh, Jan's a real stiletto. Jan's cutting you, and Michael Scott's going back for more over and over. Yeah, loves the knife. Tie in, my friend. Tie in. Uh, here's the watch NBC, everybody. <laughs> here's the song I picked it's from what the is... album Piano Man. It's oh. called 
you're my home. Oh, cute. Yeah. That's a real sweet love. <laughs> Sue just said, aw, from downstairs. <laughs> and I don't love that song, but I do like it. And, but you do love the phrase instant pleasure dome. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to spend a lot of time talking about that. <laughs> hey, do you think instant pleasure dome is a phrase that came to him in one of his many Beatles moments thinking about John Lennon and instant karma and instant coffee? That's an interesting thought. Yes, I do think that. I do think it is very Beatles-y. Yeah. Like kind of means something, but not really. And just feels esoteric enough. Yeah. And John Lennon made a point of saying the whole reason he picked instant karma is he was saw an instant coffee commercial and he thought about all the instant gratification things and he found it funny to apply it to karma. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. And then right. he was murdered. Yeah. Ah, that was uh, not karma. No, that was just wrong. That that happened. Reverse karma. Yeah. Every now and then, by the way, on uh, just one last side route, every now and then people will criticize John Lennon on the web for the man he was. And I, and I will, if they happen to do it on my feed, I'll leave you alone if you're on your feed. But if okay. you're on my feed, I will always... On my part of the web. I will always go... Yeah, he did some bad things. You know, he was trying to make amends, but then he was murdered. <laughs> he had called his son to apologize. They were having dinners together. He was trying to be better than the boy he had been. If he were alive, I'd be fine with criticizing the boy he had been. But since he was murdered mid trying to be better, maybe you got a break. All bets are off. Yeah. Don't murder people until they're done improving. Yeah. Yeah, then you cut them once or twice. <laughs> okay. All right. Another everybody, time. everybody, I know you were thrown off by the fact that we didn't get too off track this time. We'll, we'll do it next time. We'll, we will do it next time, for sure. Um, thanks for listening, though. I appreciate everybody who does listen. Hey, no problem. Wait, what? <laughs>